Mission failed. We'll get them next time. Minus Curry and Green, the dubs were tied with the fully healthy Mavs after the opening frame, were within one point with under 18 minutes left, and kept it within single digits for the first three quarters. Dallas then impressively flipped the switch behind a flurry from Kyrie and Lively, with how Dallas took over the fourth, also showcasing their teams a lot better with the deadline acquisitions of Gafford and Washington. That said, for the dubs, once reaching 100%, nine-time ring lord Steve Kerr's rotation, in my best estimation, will feature TJD backing up Draymond at center, as opposed to TJD starting and Looney as the primary backup. However, at the same time, getting Looney's body right for matchups you'll need him for down the line is more important than you'd think. Stay tuned for that and a lot more coming up. On the bright side, post-game following the L, the all-time leader in three-point percentages spirits regarding his team's chances this year were anything but shaken. The season, it really is a marathon, and any point in the season, you know, you rattle off 10 wins in a row, then, you know, that, that matters. Whether it's in the beginning or the end, it doesn't matter, and I still have no doubt that this team can uh, can get on a great run and, and um, make a good push. Not 100% sure if I heard Kerr foreshadow a 10-game winning streak to open that clip, but while the Warriors do have the 8th lowest strength of schedule remaining overall, with matchups over their next 10 against the contending Mavericks who they just took an L to, along with multiple other Tier A opponents at the moment in the Lakers, Knicks, Timberwolves, and Magic, Stefan and Draymond getting healthy is the only way 10 in a row is even remotely in the realm of possibility. For the sideline 36-year-old Stephen Curry, his non-structurally damaged twisted ankle suffered against Chicago saw him make a rehab process with the G League Santa Cruz Warriors. For the nine-time All-NBAer and two-time scoring champion, the recovery stint with the C-Dubs in Santa was short-lived as he now rejoins Golden State for their upcoming matchup in LA. Whether or not he'll play against the team that eliminated the Warriors in last year's second round is yet to be confirmed as of this recording. But let's get to a crucial development that needs to happen for the 2024 Warriors in order to have any type of success in the near future. I'm aware Kevon Looney was a Warrior high plus 6 in the recent L to Dallas. With that said, the three-time NBA champion off the bench was outscored, out-rebounded, and out-blocked by opposing bench center Derek Lively II by a combined 16. The speed gap between Looney and Lively is shown off after this Kaminga turnover, which triggers a Dallas fast break. In this frame, we see Kavon and Derek lined up at the same spot on the court, but when letting the clip roll, we see Kavon, quite frankly, get toasted in a 94-foot sprint up the court, gaining lively the momentum to off a lob from Kyrie, baptize Kaminga. How Looney's stamina, speed, and general movement stacked up to a more common than ever athletic five-man, like Lively, forces your boy to make a hot take. With what the albeit franchise hero in Loon is currently providing, he evidently needs time to recharge, and for good reason. Kavon's played the second most amount of games in the NBA since the 2021-22 season, and among the top 10 in games played since 21-22, only former Warrior Harrison Barnes and former Raptor Jonas Valanciunas have more combined games between the regular season and playoffs throughout their careers. However, Looney's minutes have been the most grueling, as filling out the center spot at just 6'9", his role in the Bay for almost a decade straight has been to consistently hold much taller 7-footers in check on the block. From the grueling mileage she's racked up, Kevon needs a recuperation phase in order to be effective again. And you may be wondering why Looney's production at his position is so vital. That's because with every trait required to be effective at the 5 spot, for no matter how many minutes within a game, defending on the back side at the center position in the NBA is around the difficulty level of hitting a 100 plus mile per hour fastball in Major League Baseball. Being a low man in basketball is also about just as important of a role as being a goalie in the National Hockey League. As the backline of defense and as the lead screen setter plus DHO initiator on offense, an incredible amount of free-flowing positive aura that stemmed from a keen focus in addition to physical adeptness in terms of speed and athleticism are required to thrive at this position in the National Basketball Association. From watching the Warriors, it's clear that getting one of the team's strongest players at this 5 spot in fresher condition than he's currently in is an underlying necessity. Being clear, Looney is not to blame for the loss in the Big D, but is currently struggling as that backline of your defense anchor. 
The reason Kavan is today's main topic of conversation is that the Warriors need Looney in short, limited minute spurts to potentially even start certain games based on matchups. Freshening up to get his body right for when it matters most in the play-in tournament entails that over the final stretch of the regular season, less minutes and or potential off nights Kavan can take, while focusing on providing valued mentorship that can keep him in the league for many years to come, you should expect Steven Douglas to discuss with his franchise legend up front in Looney dog about. To that point, Kerr's already given praise to the mentoring of Jackson Davis from Looney, which could be a sign Steve's ready to have Kavon be a voice on the bench as a third string in order to recharge him. That's a good sign for Looney's future value when he's required to get PT against the likes of AD, and if you get to the playoffs, potentially Jokic. Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. Reason Looney getting in the right condition is crucial is the player who's transformed this Warrior franchise from your ordinary Charlotte Hornet-esque small market team into the most expensive franchise in the NBA, Stephen Curry, needs the most capable bodies around him as possible, given he's just turned an incredibly old 36 years of age. It's your birthday! How does it feel to be 36? It's your birthday! I'm just trying to eat my tomatoes. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's up <laughs> you? <laughs> As we can see, the grandpa needs all the help he can get. Being real though, and between the lines, you know ball if you'd agree that the chef still has a lot left in the tank to flourish at the highest level of basketball in the association. Curry's averaging both more points per game and shooting almost 3% better from deep range than he did during the Warriors 2022 championship season. However, Basketball is a team sport, and without pieces around him like Looney being in the best mental and physical condition possible, the first two years of Steph's late 30s being age 35 in 2023 and now age 36 in 2024 will go down the drain in terms of a title reign. The race to six championships between he and LeBron may damn well go on until these two are 50. However, no matter how many years Curry has left, reaching that six ring threshold is what it'll take in the book of many to catch Michael Jordan as the non-proverbial GOAT. Considering not everyone's built like LeBron to say the ultimate least, every year for Curry needs to be savored, making my segment today about Kevon Looney increasingly crucial. Just as important as anything else, front office-wise, rookie GM Mike Dunleavy's the one who needs to most highly consider my point about everyone surrounding 36-year-old Curry being in the best condition possible mentally and physically, and here's why. Clay Thompson reportedly rejected a two-year $48 million deal before the season, but with how he's playing, perhaps he'd be willing to reconsider, potentially even for slightly less. For the second Splash Brother, an extension would help him produce with a more team-oriented approach and generally help him buy into Kerr's message and coaching style this season, something Thompson strayed from in a contract year trying to prove himself. Just because Thompson may have had rough negotiations with Dunleavy initially, that doesn't mean a man who's helped this franchise win four world championship rings shouldn't be offered another deal. With Kerr having received a mid-season extension that seemed to have rejuvenated him, while Thompson could potentially receive a late-season extension, it's unlikely, at least at this point. Clay shot just 3 for 13 in the loss to the Mavericks, and his shot selection was subpar like it's been for a large part of this season. Man's gotta be better. However, for as much hate as he gets, you can't forget this man Clay's still a 17 per night guy on 38% three-point shooting, which isn't easily expendable production whatsoever. An extension would get Thompson's aura where it needs to be, but there's still question marks from skeptics surrounding whether or not he should be given one. Expect Dunleavy to handle it either way, but I'm thinking it's Clay extension time. The bright spots in Dallas were firstly Jonathan Kaminga scoring a game-high 27 points despite turning the ball over six times, which can't happen. JK also became the youngest warrior of all time to reach 1,000 points, showing you the still just 21-year-old's development isn't going half bad. Without going too much further into warrior performances given it was a loss, Moses Moody was the highest value heavy minute impact player finishing with a positive plus minus in 19 minutes to go along with eight points. Jackson Davis led the game with 9 rebounds while scoring in double figures in 25 minutes played. Another rookie in Pajemski recorded his 16th game of posting at least 10-5-5, and five, the most among all rookies over the last two years. Andrew Wiggins scored a team's second most 17, but you would have liked to see the 11-year vet with a $24 million cap hit, who was his second option on a title team, step up to a higher degree without Stefan and 
Draymond. We know Andrew is capable of dominating with the right mindset. Now it's just about finding that wavelength and executing seamlessly under pressure by relying on his experience and daily repetitions. People forget, but at his very best, given Andrew's rare ability to be both a superstar two-way weapon and a vibe-enhancing glue guy all at once, with both a smarter work ethic and a smarter focus level, the number one overall pick out of Kansas raising his game is so damn important to this Dubs team. The Torontonian finding that killer routine is bad news for opponents and great news for the Dubs chemistry and potential success. But regarding the third member of the all-time greatest big three in the 77-year history of the association, is it a good idea to extend Clay before the playoffs? Remember, Dunleavy offered Thompson that extension before the season and he turned it down, so taking that into account, let me know your take in the comment section. Best answer gets next video's comment or shoutout while competing to be one of five in position to win either a free jersey or shoe. Today's shoutout goes to JJD, who says, Tough to say who TJD reminds me of right now. He's very young and still hasn't gotten a ton of minutes. I remember watching him in college at Indiana. All I know is, when he's on the court, he can score the basketball with ridiculous efficiency, and he's a pretty good defender in his own right. It'll be fun to see how he develops, as he's literally only a rookie, but solid potential nonetheless. JJD, I agree that TJD is tough to compare to anyone, as this man Trace has a unique skill set. Appreciate that answer from JJD. Keep your takes flowing down below for the best chance at a free jersey or shoe of your choosing. This was your boy D Flow, and I'll see you next video.